Hey guys, welcome to Practical Home Projects. This week we are going to be discussing electrical switches. We thought this video might be valuable for people who are just curious about how switches work in their own house, or if you're planning a couple DIY projects in the future, we'll go over how to uh, combine you know, two switches, three switches, multiple different orientation scenarios. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing we need to talk about is kind of what a switch even does. So as you know, you have your main electrical panel, and then that will run a wire to uh, any utilities that you have around the house. That could be an outlet, that could be a light, that could be uh, your stove top or whatever. So what this basic two-way switch does is it's an opportunity to break that circuit. Um, they're sometimes called circuit interrupters. And you can see this simple switch just has two connection points or terminals. And when the switch is flipped on, those two terminals are connected. And then if you flip it off, it actually breaks that connection so that electricity can no longer pass through the switch. You'll see there's nowhere for the switch to connect to a neutral wire because it doesn't need any sort of potential drop in order to function. It just needs that hot conductor. Let's look at a very basic schematic. <clears throat> You'll see that we have a light bulb there in the picture. That light bulb could be an outlet, garbage disposal, whatever you need it to be. So you'll have to have your power source on one end. You'll have a switch in the middle and then you'll have your device on the other end. So for that single, simple two-way switch, if it's in the on position, that current is connected and you'll have a um, completed circuit. If that switch is flipped off, then that circuit will be broken. So the two-way switch has on and off labeled. Let's look at a different geometric layout. So for instance, if you have your power source and then just the way your house is laid out, you have your device and then you have your switch on the other end. What would happen if you just tried to connect those with the shortest possible route? Well, unfortunately, now your power source is hooked right up to your light bulb and it's just going to turn on. And there's not really anything that your switch can do about it to interrupt that circuit because it's already completely connected. The only way out of this actually is to reroute your cable all the way through the switch and then back to the light, the light bulb or device. And in this specific diagram, you see that's a lot of extra cable used. So let's see if we can think of a way to do this using a little bit less cable. And the key to understanding that is to know what that black line actually represents. So that's a little bit of a simplification. So every time you see a black wire, a black line in my drawings here, that's actually representing just the hot conductor. And that's gonna be wrapped up in this non-metallic sheathing. And that's gonna have two other conductors that we're not uh, representing in this diagram but are very important. So there's the white coated one, which is the neutral wire. And then there's an uncoated grounding wire for safety reasons. So one way we can save a little bit of wire and uh, simplicity with this layout is to actually use a different type of cable. So they sell cables that have an additional hot conductor. Um, so you'll see this one actually has a red labeled uh, wire in that same sheathing. So rather than just using this sheathing on the left that has uh, you know, the neutral on the ground that we really only need one of. Instead of duplicating that, we can just run one of these uh, 14 threes, for example, between our device and our switch. And that will save us a little bit of money and a little bit of time. Now you'll see in the field actually that it's very common to use this cable on the left for what we have on the right there. And what they'll do is they'll relabel that white sheathing uh, with either black tape or black marker or something to indicate that they're actually using it as a hot current carrying um, wire. And they can do that because like I mentioned a second ago, the switch itself does not need uh, neutral. It does not consume any power, does not need that voltage drop. However, that is no longer allowed according to the 2017 National Electrical Code. Now every single junction block needs to have an actual functional neutral wire. So the correct way to do this is to use this 14.3 like we see over here on the right, and that will run between your light bulb to your switch. And then the neutral is just not gonna be used. You're just gonna put a cap on it and leave it inside the junction box. And there's two reasons for doing that. The first reason is if in the future you want to extend this circuit, maybe you wanna add another outlet or something nearby. Now you have a neutral and a hot, you can just go ahead and add that outlet and it's relatively straightforward. Whereas before you would have had to start at a different location. Uh, the second reason is that a lot of modern switches actually might need a little bit of a power draw. If it has a dimmer, 
has Bluetooth capability, or maybe it has some sort of motion sensor, then it actually needs a neutral to even function. Um, and they just want to make sure that these are upgrade compatible. Um, here's another common situation where you might need to use that uh, two, cur uh, two hot current carrying cable, um, just for simplicity's sake, really. So if you have two switches that are in one junction box, and then two devices that are in another junction box, but they actually need two different hot carrying currents. So for example, a light and a fan, you could just simply use the same cable, but carrying two hot wires, and that will allow you to flip those two switches, or to flip those two uh, devices on and off independently of one another. Um, so that's kind of the basics of a two-way switch. Now let's move on to a three-way switch. So in this scenario, you might actually want two different switches to hit the same device. Um, for example, two different switches on opposite sides of the living room. You still have to make sure everything is in the same order. So I'm going to keep putting that power source on one side and your device on the other side, just for simplicity's sake, and then the switches are in the middle. But it's important to remember that these two switches have to actually communicate with one another. If we were to use simple two-way switches, then if one of them is off, the current is broken no matter what the other one is doing. So let's look to see what's inside a three-way switch. You'll notice first thing that it does not have an on-off label, and that's because it is not specifically on or off. It just redirects the current between these two uh, terminals at the bottom. So the, the top one, which is usually a uh, black screw, is going to be called your common terminal, and then the bottom two are your two uh, alternate carrying terminals. Um, so it can be switched between the two of them, but at no point is it actually completely disconnected. So let's look back at that diagram real quick. So we'll see if you can switch between the two of them, that gives you an, uh, an opportunity for the two switches to communicate with one another. And the way you could do that is by running a red wire between two of the terminals and then a black wire between the other two terminals. Um, so what will happen is you'll use your 14-2 to connect the power source to the first switch and from the second switch to the device. And then if this first switch is, let's say, switched to the red current, red uh, wire, and the second one is also switched to the red wire, then that means that the device is going to be on. If this one switches to the black wire while the first one's on the red wire, then it will be off. And you could remedy that by either flipping this switch or flipping this switch to make sure they're both on the same one. So that's the basics of a three-way switch. You can also use a three-way switch um, in this circumstance. So for example, if you have a, light at the, a switch at the bottom of the stairs, a light in the middle, and then a switch at the top of the stairs, you might see this order. And actually electricians are gonna hate the way I'm about to describe this, but there is a potential way to do this that's gonna be very uh, cumbersome. And that's because you actually could use an additional hot wire inside of your cable sheathing to connect all three of these points with the shortest amount of total cable. However, now you're gonna to have to use this uh, sheathing with three hot conductors. So now this could be a 14-4, for example, and this is a lot more difficult to find in your everyday hardware store. And the reason you need this is because this light bulb has to come after the second switch. So the red and the black care, uh, hot conductors are actually gonna completely bypass the light bulb as they communicate with each other and then this second switch is gonna make that final connection to either turn the light on or off. Um, so generally, a, you know, an electrician would probably just run a 14-3 between these two devices and then just run a separate 14-2 from the second switch to the light. But this is another way to do it if you feel so uh, inclined. So that was two three-way switches, but if you wanna add an additional switch to give yourself, for example, three different ways to flip a device, you'll need to step it up a little bit because you notice that each of those three-way switches actually only has two uh, terminals that can be connected to that kind of communication circuit and then one hot terminal or one common terminal. So a four-way switch has two common terminals and then two uh, sort of communication output terminals. Um, and you can stack as many four-way switches as you want in series. So let's look at what's going on inside of a four-way switch. So it has your inputs at the top, and then sort of your outputs at the bottom is usually how that will be labeled. And with the switch in one figure configuration, it'll flip-flop the two, and then the other configuration, it'll just straight down left or right side. So if we look at what that looks like in our final diagram, you can actually just run that 14-3 the whole way, and then uh, 
in this middle switch, it can either reverse the current or it can keep it the same orientation. So for example, if this first switch is flipped to red, the second switch keeps it on red, and the third switch is also selected to red, then now you have your light bulb on. If any of these switches is then flipped, then the final connection cannot be made, but then you can reflip any of the other switches to then recomplete the circuit. So for example, if you flip this middle one, it would then go red to black, but then if you flip the first one again, then it would go um, black, and then this would reverse it back to red, and then this one was on red the entire time, and the new light switch would be on. And then you can get a little bit creative with it as long as you follow those basic guidelines. You can put as many four-way switches in series as you like. You're not going to be limited by your electrical drawing. At some point, you'll be limited by sort of the resistance that accumulates through all these circuits. And then, of course, the more devices you have in a row, the more likely there is to be a failure eventually. And that's sort of the basics of what we have today. So let me go through the key takeaways. So everything must be in series. You have to have your power source at the beginning and your device at the end. You can't add any loops. You can't add any branches. Um, the best practice and what you have to do to follow the code going forward is to keep a actual neutral available in every single junction box. And then here I just have a table. If you only need one switch, you can use a two-way. If you need two switches, you'll use a three-way for both of those. If you have three or more switches, you'll use a three-way on the ends and then as many four-ways as you need in the middle. So I really hope this helped you guys with setting up your new project. Um, if you really liked what you saw today, you can reach us at Practical Home Projects. Um, please subscribe. If you thought this was helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave any comments or thoughts in the uh, comment section below. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.